Hello, my name is Sahil Malik. I'm a trainer and consultant and I love Angular. I deliver trainings on Angular regularly and you can find my email address right here. Here's another video making yet another Angular concept easy and simple to understand. As always, I look forward to your feedback. Thank you for watching. Now, it is hard to talk about Angular without talking about module loaders. And one of the most popular, popular module loader is Webpack. The thing is that older libraries like jQuery or frankly even AngularJS, also known as Angular 1, uh, you know, they had a unique way of, you know, that you would use them. You would say script src is equal to, and you know, the whole library would download from a CDN or something. And the thing is that if you're using 1% of that library, you are still paying the penalty of all of it. Modern libraries have gotten bigger and we have better ways of doing the same thing now that basically you load only what you care about. So with Angular, a simple hello world application could be as small as 15 kilobytes. Yeah, that's small. Of course, download speeds are better, but also performance is a lot better. And one of the most common module loaders is Webpack. Now, module loading is built into Node because it uses ES6, but today we still need these third-party module loaders uh, because, you know, ES5 doesn't understand require uh, or they, ES5 doesn't have the ability to load other files, you know, well, through other helpers like Webpack it can, but on its own it cannot. Okay, so what exactly is Webpack? Webpack allows you to basically bundle anything. So your project today, you know, in modern dev, you're probably using technologies like SAS and SCSS, or you have a bunch of other artifacts like images and a uh, bunch of JavaScript files, you have TypeScript and so on and so forth. And when you're ready to ship your application, you want to bundle it all together into a smaller and simpler application. And there are you know, related concepts like tree shaking, etc., that apply over here as well. Webpack helps you with this. Now, by all means, this video is not a Webpack tutorial. Uh, I'm going to give you a very high level introduction of Webpack. And truly, you know, Webpack itself, you know, we could be talking about it for a few hours. It's a pretty big topic. But let's see how Webpack works in a very simple example. Now here is a very simple example I have built here. It's using moment.js. It's got, you know, package.json as you see here and index.js. On the left hand side you can see that npm start runs this line of code. Okay, my application works. Now I am ready to ship it. How do I ship it? Do I just send this index.js to my client? Let's try it. So I'm gonna copy this index.js to you know, one level up, and let's say here, I'm gonna say node index.js, and boom, it fails. It fails because it says can't find module moment. Well, that didn't work, so let's get rid of this. So uh, I'm gonna go back into new proj. The reason that this file works in this folder is because when this line runs, Right, it is going to try and file find the file here or the folder here, and if it can't find it, then it looks into node modules. And inside node modules, it finds a folder called moment. And inside of there, you know, it finds the necessary files required to run it. And that's how it's working. It's looking in a folder called node modules. Are you supposed to ship node modules to your customer? Absolutely not, because it's got a lot of junk in it and it's pretty huge and sometimes actually they don't even work around across platforms. So like the, the, the depth of the file folder structure will work on a Mac but won't work on Windows, so you may run into such issues. So the thing is, we need uh, you know, a, a packager like Webpack. So I'm gonna go ahead and add Webpack into my project here. How do I do that? I'm gonna say, uh, npm install webpack and I'm gonna say save dev. The reason I am doing save dev, I've talked about this in other videos, is because I don't want to you know, ship webpack itself. I want to use webpack during development time, like right now, uh, and when I'm done packaging the application, I just want to you know, ship it. Uh, I want to ship my code, I want to ship moment.js, but I don't 
want to ship Webpack. So I said save dev and you see here that it'll, it is going ahead and installing a bunch of things in node modules. Give it a second. And you'll see that when it is done, it'll create a node error called dev dependencies and it'll put Webpack in there. So give it a second. So wow, this totally exploded. That's normal. You just close this and never look at it. Okay, here we go. Webpack is here. Now let's go ahead and modify our package JSON to use Webpack. And I'm simply gonna say Webpack. No, let's call it bundle. Let's call the command bundle so it makes a little bit more sense on what we're trying to do. And I'm gonna say Webpack uh, and you can say index.js because that's a starter file, but then the next question is, okay, fine, that's the starter file. Uh, what is the output file? So the thing is, Webpack expects a file in the root called webpack.config.js. You can name it anything else you want. You just have to pass it in as you know a command line parameter here. But anyway, I'm gonna call it webpack.config.js and this config.js is supposed to return an object like module.exports uh, is equal to and I'm just gonna keep it really simple for this example. I'm gonna say entry is index.js. So that's our entry point. Good practice, always use relative paths like this. And I'm gonna say output is, let's say file name, bundle.js. That's basically it. This is my starter webpack file. We're saying, go ahead and look at this index.js. And then my webpack is gonna go crawl this code. It's gonna find this line here and it'll know that it also needs to bundle moment.js. And once it's done bundling, it'll go ahead and create a file called bundle.js. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna say npm run bundle. And it basically bundles see everything that we care about, including locale files. So again, if you've been using moment and you haven't been referencing these files, you're doing it wrong. But because I'm using Webpack, it just takes care of it for me. And now it creates this huge file called bundle.js. So if you look at the size of it, it's huge because it has got my code in it and it has got bundle, it's got moment.js in it. But now the cool thing is that I can take that bundle.js and copy it one folder up. Remember index.js didn't work. But now if I said node bundle.js, bingo, it seems to work, right? That's pretty cool. Now let's expand this example further. Now, you know, this is a very, very simple example, but let's say that I had a bunch of other files here. Like let's say I had a styles.css. And styles.css is something that I want to bundle with this project. And you can you know, imagine further that I can have a bunch of other files here, like uh, perhaps HTML files, maybe something that's loaded from a URL, etc., etc. So, you know, the thing is Webpack is pretty flexible and with the combination of Webpack and Gulp, you can do almost anything. So I'm gonna say background color, uh, let's say hash, let's give it, you know, something 8899A, right? So give it a color of some sort. And what I want to be able to do is that I want that file, the styles.css file, to get bundled in my bundle.js. Now, wait a minute, are we gonna bundle a CSS in JavaScript? Absolutely. Because the thing is, you know, you can bundle anything in JavaScript and it, if it reduces calls going to the server, that's a win. So obviously my Webpack entry point here needs to know about the styles.css. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm going to go to index.js, I'm gonna make one minor change here and at the very top here, I'm going to go ahead and line, add a line of code that informs you know, this application that yeah, we wanna load uh, you know, the CSS file in here as well. So in order to do that, I will simply say, uh, you know, require styles.css. Now, the webpack config.js is not going to understand that hey, uh, you know, I need to load CSS files also. Like you need to give it some hints and some, uh, you know, idea that these are the file extensions we're looking for. And that's the job of various loaders. So while I talk about loaders, let me actually talk about another concept here, which is 
you know that this webpack config.js right now is producing this one file bundle.js but webpack is pretty flexible and it allows me to do a whole bunch of other things like hey i want to bundle my styles separately uh, all the polyfill separately and you know my code index.js changes quite often but this node modules doesn't change that often so i want to leverage browser caching because you know this was the beefier part of my application anyway my code is just one percent of the application so can we not change this file name or have some control on it so browsers will cache it? Yeah, you can do all of that. And we're going to modify this webpack config.js and do exactly that. So I'm going to take this webpack config.js and modify it slightly like this. So what I'm doing here is that I change that module.exports into a function which is returning the same object. So effectively, it's the same thing but I've made the object a little bit more complicated. So the same entry point, outputs are multiple now though. So basically what I'm saying here is that I'm using a plugin here called Common Chunks plugin. And what I'm saying is that if there's any, if you're looking inside of node modules, then basically, uh, you know, the chunk is called like vendor and anything from node modules goes into a file called vendor. Anything from uh, non-node modules goes into a file called main. But, so that's the name, okay, main or vendor, and there are a bunch of other, these replacement tokens you can use. And then we are putting a hash in front of it, so every time the file changes, we get a new hash. So that's how we are creating unique file names. So now, you will see that two file names will get created. Another thing I'm doing now, because I'm creating multiple files, I am also, uh, you know, basically putting it in its own folder called dist. And I'm using a bunch of loaders here for CSS, PNG, JPEG, and basically this should be MIME type. Let's fix that. So basically what I want to be able to do here is uh, I want to bundle, uh, you know, a bunch of CSS files, PNG, JPEG, and I, in order to do that, I use, uh, you know, this regex expression, right? And I have to use these loaders. Now these loaders don't just appear out of thin air. These are also node modules. So I need to go ahead and add these loaders into my package.json. So let's do that. Now, there are loaders available for pretty much everything that you care about. And here are a bunch of loaders that we want to use. And because we just modified our package.json, I'm gonna go back into my new prod. I'm gonna say npm install, and it'll you know install these new loaders for me. And now because they become a part of my project, I should be able to use them. So while this is installing, a quick recap, what we did here is that we basically told our index.js that go ahead and read styles.css also, so that'll also get bundled. And also, um, you know, here's my styles.css and I modified webpack config.js to bundle my code into chunk name.main.js and node modules into vendor or other chunk name.vendor.js. And all of that is going to end up in a folder called dist. And now when I run npm run bundle, it'll basically do the same magic as before. It basically bundled things up. But you see here that now it has bundled two different files and they are actually in the dist folder. And you see here there's the vendor file and this is the main file. And I'm going to go ahead and open the main file here. Because, you know, vendor will have node modules. It'll have moment.js in it. And you see here that if I search for this style that we had in there, that is also packaged in here. You saw that? The style also gets packaged in here. Now, like I said before, this is by no means this is a tutorial on Webpack. This is a very high level introduction. Webpack can get fairly complicated. But like say for instance, if you're using Angular and using lazy loading and you want to chunk your application into five different pieces based on where the modules are, well, then your project template should be smart enough to understand it. Can you teach Webpack to do that? Yeah. Will this Webpack config.js do that? No. Right? Bunch of other things. You want to support multiple environments, production, etc. Does this Webpack config.js do that yet? No. But can you configure it to do that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you basically just add more logic in here. Uh, let me think of another one. Uh, let's say you're using SAS and you want to say, or TypeScript, and you're saying, go ahead and also package source maps when you are debugging. Can this webpack config.js do that? No, we don't even have the logic for that here. Uh, but is it possible 
for Webpack to do it, you know, by enhancing this file. Absolutely. Can we build a process here? Can you say, hey, do the TypeScript compilation and then do the SAS compilation and then go ahead and prepare bundles in these five different files. Might be required in a project. Can this file do it? No. Can Webpack do it? Yes. So like I said, this is not a full Webpack tutorial, but it's just a taste test of what a bundle loader does and what the purpose of it is. And with that background, we can dive deeper into Angular concept when I talk about bundle loaders. You'll know what I mean. Thanks.